When asked what was the most important development leading to modern hearing aids, people often answer with a bit of tech, such as digital processors. But the key invention doesn't go inside a hearing aid at all. All of us wearing modern devices owe a debt of gratitude to a certain dummy. I want you to meet my friend Kimar. That's Knowles Electronics Mannequin for Acoustic Research. The sound that reaches your eardrums is considerably altered by the shape of your head and ears. Even the sound reflecting off your shoulders has an effect. Yet designers of hearing aids had no way to measure what you hear in a realistic way. It's fair to say that hearing aids weren't even science-based without this capability, especially because mics above the ears pick up sound differently than the eardrum in your ear canal. Johns Hopkins alluded to this in a hilarious panel that was part of a larger graphic story. The turning point came when Knowles Electronics developed Keymar in the early 70s. Keymar and later mannequins have a realistic head, ears, and upper body with acoustic properties similar to actual people. In place of the eardrums are microphones to record and measure audio. A hearing aid placed on the mannequin will act just as it would on a human. All hearing aid companies now rely on acoustic mannequins to optimize their device performance. To learn more about how mannequins are used, I stopped by Hear Advisor in Rockford, Illinois. I'm Andy Saban. I'm the scientific advisor to Hear Advisor. And I'm Steve Taddy, and I'm the lab director here at Hear Advisor. And really what we're trying to do is provide audio samples and objective metrics for individuals with hearing loss, as well as just professionals in the field, so they have more fair, objective ground to compare all the products that are out there nowadays. Uh, we record um, on-head recordings of hearing aids using this mannequin uh, where we create realistic sound fields, um, ambisonic recordings of real world places, and then put the hearing aids on the mannequin. And instead of eardrums, this mannequin has microphones and it has acoustic properties designed to mimic sort of the average human. And so what we can do is make recordings that simulate what would happen for a real user uh, using that hearing aid in realistic environments. Steve and Andy demonstrated how HearAdvisor uses their mannequin to realistically measure and simulate hearing aid performance with my devices as the example. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to do that one again. As it turns out, it's harder to put hearing aids on someone else than yourself. Now we're ready to record the sound from my hearing aids and derive their gain. But before we looked at the measurements, I put my devices back in and listened to representative speech and noise. I sat next to a nine-year-old lady. We talked nearly the entire flight. You would not believe the story. Now, outside the booth, Steve showed me my measured hearing aid gain. The program does this by calculating the difference in sound levels picked up by Kimar with and without my hearing aids in. As a final check, I removed my devices and donned headphones. Steve played back the same audio I listened to in the recording booth, first as it was, then with the same gain as my hearing aids applied to the recorded sound. Whoa, that is really realistic. Without mannequins like us, Hear Advisor couldn't perform their objective hearing device evaluations and hearing aids themselves would perform little better than they did in the 70s. Still think we're dummies? Thank you.